Hey guys, hello fellow YouTubers, um, and hello all survivors of this non uh, this non consensual experimentation, directed energy weapon experimentation. Um, I'm doing pretty bad. <laughs> My head feels like it's being crushed in um, by the directed energy weapon pulses to it. Um, but there's some important information that I want to get through. Um, some huge information that just came out and then I want to go so I want to go through this this article that came out on September 1st um, and it was put out by the New York Times uh, where the title of it is microwave weapons are prime suspect in ills of US embassy workers um, so that's that's really awesome because if you guys can remember like all targeted individuals and me on my videos um, you know, I was saying this is directed energy weapons that, that hit the embassy workers, but the mainstream media, even the Senate Investigative Committee, they were uh, kind of researching that, but saying it's a it's a huge mystery. So it's pretty good proof because uh, what we're saying eventually is what the mainstream media has to say uh, because it's the truth. Uh, so that's a pretty good thing for target individuals. It's a big strength. This is a huge strength for us, is that we are telling the truth. This is really happening. So as long as we keep doing that, eventually, you know, this does come out. The truth does come out. Uh, and I completely believe that. Um, yeah, I'm feeling really horrible, guys. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and go through. I have a bunch of information today because uh, I wanted to go through this article and then um, some things... Uh, from Ramola D. and Susie Dawson's interview. Uh, Susie Dawson really understands mainstream media. She understands how to get, you know, alternative uh, things that the media is not reporting on, uh, how it kind of works, and how they eventually do have to report on things, uh, kind of like Snowden and Assange. Um, give me one second. Like, I'm really nauseous, and then my head is just like all around the crown of my head, I, it feels stiff and like cooked and I'm having a hard time thinking. Uh, I hate saying, I guess it's common knowledge, I hate saying it, but you know, when, when we do put out a lot of information and, and do good activism, you know, my attackers have been hitting me a lot harder um, since I've kind of, I've kind of got a fire under my butt and I'm like, I'm going to get this information out and you know, we're seeing the whites of their eyes right now. I mean, we are seeing the whites of their eyes and with this program and this information coming out. So now's the time. Now's the time to fire metaphorically, you know, with information. Um, but let me go ahead and, uh, and read this article. Give me one second, guys. Okay, so this is from September 1st, uh, the New York Times. I'm going to read the article, and then I kind of want to say, I hope I can remember uh, what I want to say afterwards, because it's kind of important. Somebody suggested on a call last night, and I was also thinking about it too, and we probably need to follow up on this, but I'm going to go ahead and read the article. So, microwave weapons are prime suspect in ills of U.S. embassy workers. Um, Doctors and scientists say microwave strikes may have caused sonic delusions and very real brain damage among embassy staff and family members. There's the Cuban embassy. Uh, but it's by William J. Broad, so he might be somebody uh, good to get in touch with about uh, targeting us being hit, you know, individual citizens being hit by directed energy weapons and experimented on. Uh, during the Cold War, Washington feared that Moscow was seeking to turn microwave radiation into covert weapons of mind control. More recently, the American military itself sought to develop microwave arms that could invisibly beam painfully loud booms and even spoken words into people's heads. The aims were to disable attackers and wage psychological warfare. Now doctors and scientists say such unconventional weapons may have caused the baffling symptoms and ailments that starting in late 2016, hit more than three dozen American diplomats and family members in Cuba and China. The Cuban incidents resulted in a diplomatic rupture between Havana and Washington. 
medical team that examined 21 affected diplomats from Cuba made no mention of microwaves in its detailed report published in the JAMA, uh, that's the Journal of American, Journal of American uh, Medical Association or something like that uh, in March. But Douglas H. Smith, the study's lead author and director of Center for Brain Injury and Repair at the University of Pennsylvania, said in a recent interview that microwaves were now considered a main suspect, the prime suspect, uh, and that the team was increasingly sure the diplomats had suffered brain injury. Kind of like I feel right now. It's not, it's not funny, but I think you have to laugh sometimes how horrible this is. Uh, and there's a lot of hope right now, the activism, and then especially this article. I mean, this is a sign that the media, like, as part of some, you know, the, the big mainstream narrative, they're going to have to talk about this now. And they may kind of try and derail it and, you know, slant it in the mainstream narrative, but they're going to have to talk about directed energy weapons. They're going to have to talk about them being used on certain people. And then if they don't tell the whole truth, you know, and they do try and uh, spin it a lot, then we can just take it the rest of the way. You know, people will know about parts of it, and then we just tell the truth about, you know, whatever the mainstream media is not clear on, you know. Um, Everybody was relatively skeptical, skeptical at first, he said, and everyone now agrees there's something there. Uh, Dr. Smith remarked that the diplomats and doctors jokingly refer to the trauma as the immaculate concussion. Uh, strikes with microwaves, some experts now argue, more plausibly explain reports of painful sounds, ills, and traumas uh, than do other possible culprits aka sonic attacks, viral infections, and contagious anxiety or mass hysteria, which is just ridiculous, which is such propaganda that people who have never experienced something before just all of a sudden have mass hysteria uh, and paranoia about something they didn't even know about before, before they experienced effects of the things. Um, incredible that people could believe any, any of the real conspiracy theories, which is the mainstream narrative, but they're forced, they're forced to tell the truth. Uh, in particular, a growing number of analysis cite an eerie phenomenon known as the Frey effect, or the, the Fry effect, sorry, uh, named after Alan H. Fry, an American scientist. Uh, long ago, he found that microwaves can trick the brain into perceiving what seem to be ordinary sounds. So, hearing microwaves, scientists have known for decades that the brain can perceive some microwaves as sound. Uh, microwaves hitting the head in the area around the temporal lobe were perceived as a sound in the 1962 experiment. Several theories have sought to explain the exact mechanism, but it remains in dispute. And that's not true. They know how to create a sound uh, by shooting a microwave at the temporal lobe so that Basically, the brain tissue expands, and then as it, uh, you know, as it cools, a signal is then sent, bypassing the outer ear to hit the inner ear, and so that's how people hear V2K, voice to skull. All I call it audible voice to skull, or um, you know, or clicks and things like that. Or my attackers actually uh, make me hear sounds that aren't actually uh voices i do hear get v2k audible v2k but they'll make it so it sounds like like nobody lives upstairs i'm pretty sure with all the informa information i have but i hear somebody like rolling a marble on the floor and stuff like that and i think that is also uh, a sound sound the skull uh technique with microwaves um I wanted to answer uh, one of the questions in my comments by, by James, James Lyko, uh, but I might do that on the next video. But with all the information that I have right now uh, and, you know, going up and trying to knock on the, the door upstairs uh, to the condo upstairs, I'm very sure, uh, you know, that nobody lives there. And yet I do hear like sounds like a chair moving and stuff like that, which I am almost 100 percent sure. Uh, it is some kind of like V2K or sound of skull, um, but it sounds very it sounds very real, like it's coming from the area. Uh, but I, I'll go over that. I'll, I'll go through some questions for the next video. Um, I kind of I got like together a bunch like too much information, 
So I may have to like cut this this video. I may have to do some of it later because I'm I'm just feeling really sick right now. Um, my whole face just feels fried, you know, and I'm having a hard time moving my mouth. Um, but we do the best we can, and right now we're having some huge wins. So um, you know, thank God for that, and uh, we'll just keep getting as much information out as we can. Uh, so sound waves. Uh, sound waves entering the ear make the eardrum vibrate. These vibrations are conveyed to the co uh, cochlea and converted into electrical signals. Uh, the brain's temporal lobes uh, receive signals from the ears and process them into sound and speech. Uh, the false sensations, the experts say, may account for a defining symptom of the diplomatic incident. The perception of loud noises, including ringing, buzzing, and grinding. Initially, experts cited those symptoms as evidence of stealthy attacks with sonic weapons. Uh, members of Jason, a secret, secretive group of elite scientists that helps the federal government assess new threats to national security, say it has been scrutinizing the diplomatic mystery this summer and weighing possible expl explanations, including microwaves. If they're part of a secretive group of elite scientists that helps the federal government assess threats to national security, they probably know everything about directed energy weapons and that they are being used on uh, tons of American citizens, tens of thousands at least, you know, I think hundreds, hundreds of thousands. Um, like the, okay, what's this in Science Times? Uh, asked about the microwave theory of the case, the State Department said the investigation had yet to identify the cause or source of the attacks, uh, and the FBI declined to comment on the status of the investigation or any theories. Uh, the microwave idea teams with unanswered questions. Who fired the beams? Uh, the Russian government? The Cuban government? Uh, a rogue Cuban faction sympathetic to Moscow? And if so, where did the attackers get the unconventional arms? Um, and I'm not going to go into my theory. I've, I've given a couple of my theories on previous videos, um, you know, about who I kind of thought did it. Um, but I'm not sure on that one. Uh, there's a lot of theories going around. Of It, it might have even been the American government, you know, to cause problems with Cuba um, so that they would have some kind of power over Cuba uh, to maybe... I don't know, annex it or something like that. I don't. I, there's a lot of theories about that, but I, I'd need a lot more, uh, you know, proof to know exactly who did it. Maybe China, maybe Russia, you know, so that the directed energy weapon program comes out in America and that Russia can keep experimenting and, you know, the experimentation in America stops so that they don't advance the weapons enough or something like that. You know, there's a lot of theories, but I guess I did kind of go into to two of them uh, let me continue. I'm getting off track. <laughs> I feel like crap, guys. I feel like total, total crap. I feel like great about the stuff going on, like the, the, um, you know, TI day in this article. And then there, um, I, I'll go through it. I couldn't get into it, but the, the history channel had on Friday, uh, August, I think it was August 31st or August 30, I think it was August 31st. Uh, in search of with Zachary Quinto, the guy who played Spock in Star Trek, uh, there was an episode of In Search of Mind Control, and I've heard that it's great. Like from the people who saw it, who were targeted individuals, they said it's down to earth. It goes through the technology. It's not going out into left field. It's not propaganda to be disbelieved by the public. It's like a really, really good, um, really good episode. So I want to see that. But I mean that, that there's just it's like there's so much stuff going on with with this information coming out, with awareness coming out, with other social, you know, uh, alternative news talking about this. There's so much stuff that, you know, I can't cover it, and I'm really excited about it, yet my personal situation uh, really sucks. Like, I'm getting hit heavily. Um, you know, my, my childhood friend just, just died, and, and that's really weird. Uh, you know, just, it, it's, you know, I can't even really comprehend that right now. I'm still digesting it. So, like, personally, I feel like shit, but everything that's going on is giving me a lot of hope. So, 
you know, bear with me, guys. Bear with me. We all struggle like this. Um, this this whole thing is pure struggle, right? Uh, okay. Um, hold on one second. I got my shirt, I got my Hulk shirt on. Unleash the Hulk. I'm gonna try and unleash it today on this one. Now I've got a lot of a lot of great information for this video, and I'm I'm gonna finish up this article. It's a long article too. Um, but let me finish it before I go into a good idea for us to actually act on uh, after I read this article. Okay, at his home outside Washington, uh, Mr. Frey, Fry, the scientist who uncovered the neural phenomenon, said federal investigators have questioned him on the diplomatic riddle and that microwave radiation is considered a possible cause. I didn't know he was still alive. Um, so he would be somebody good, uh, you know, for Ramola D. I don't know if, you know, I'll call him and stuff like that, but I don't really do uh, interviews. I'm, I mean, I guess I could start doing some interviews with some regular TIs, but, but I'm not sure about that. But uh, Alan Fry is actually still alive, so it would be a good thing. I don't, I don't know what kind of mandates or what things he signed to not talk about this, but I think we should try and get in touch with him. Okay, uh, Mr. Fry, uh, now 83, has traveled widely and long served as a contractor and consultant to a number of federal agencies. He speculated that Cubans aligned with Russia, uh, the nation's longtime ally, might have launched microwave strikes and attempts to undermine developing ties between Cuba and the United States. That's actually a good theory. Um, it is a possibility, he said at his kitchen table, in dictatorships you often have factions that think nothing of going against the general policy if it suits their needs. I think that's a perfectly viable explanation. I didn't think about that. I didn't think the Q, like the uh, Cuba in conjunction with Russia, uh, would try and uh, damage ties to America. Is that that's Alan Fry? Alan H. Fry. So this is the guy who uh, had a huge part. I don't maybe a sole part in coming up with my, the microwave hearing effect. I kind of think that they already had it, you know, before him. Uh, but he's the guy who it when it came out to the public, you know, he, he, he got credit for it. Um, but Hey, this is the guy, Alan H. Fry at his home outside Washington. This is the guy <laughs> I have microwave hearing and B2K. Um, this is the guy who's responsible. Uh, Alan H. Fry, and he's probably has a great house, like a lot of money and a nice neighborhood and everything like that. And my head's being caved in while I'm listening to chatterbox and manual injections of uh, surveillance role players. Okay, well, let me, let me just move on. Uh, Alan H. Fry at his home outside Washington. In 1960, he stumbled on an acoustic effect of microwaves that was eventually named after him, the Fry effect. Okay. Uh, microwaves are ubiquitous in modern life. The short ra radio waves power radars, cook foods, relay messages, and link cell phones to antenna towers. Uh, they're a form of electromagnetic radiation on the same spectrum as light and x-rays, only at the opposite end. Uh, while radio broadcasting can employ waves a mile or more in length, microwaves range in size from roughly a foot to a tiny fraction of an inch. Uh, they're seen as harmless in such everyday uses as microwaving foods, but their diminutive size also enables tight focusing, as when dish antennas turn disorganized rays into concentrated beams. Uh, the dimensions of the human head, scientists say, make it a fairly good antenna for picking up microwave signals. Look at all this evidence that the New York Times is putting out for the case of targeted individuals worldwide. I mean, this is something else. This is something else. I mean, if this is not a sign that, uh, you know, we're, we're making waves that awareness is exponentially increasing, I don't know what is. I mean, what would force the New York Times to have to tell the truth about microwave hearing and things like that? Now, they're not coming out and saying, 
uh, you know, there's a bunch of people all over the world who are experiencing this, just regular citizens uh, for research and development, uh, you know, to destroy their lives and things like that. But they are saying that it happened to the embassy workers in both Cuba and China. Uh, so that's a huge step. It's a huge step. Uh, huge step. Mr. Fry, uh, a biologist, said he stumbled on uh, the acoustic effect in 1960 while working for General Electric's Advanced Electronic Center at Cornell University. Uh, a man who measured radar signals at a nearby GE facility uh, came up to him at a meeting and confided that he could hear the beam's pulses. Zip, zip, zip. Intrigued, Mr. Fry traveled to the man's workplace in Syracuse and positioned himself in, the, in a radar beam. Lo, he recalled, I could hear it too. And I think also clicks. You hear clicks too. I hear clicks sometimes, uh, but mostly I hear the sound, like a noise to skull sound that's bypassing my outer ear or actual audio, like audible voices that sound like they're coming from the left. Right now it sounds like they're coming from my front, like from my front left. So it switches sometimes. My attackers will like switch where it sounds like it's coming from. Um, Mr. Fry's resulting papers, reporting that even deaf people could hear the false sounds, founded a new field of study on radiation's, uh, radiation's neural impacts. Mr. Fry's first paper in 1961 reported that power densities uh, 160 times lower than the standard maximum safe level for continuous exposure could induce the sonic delusions. All right, guys, I'm kind of worried because last time I did like an hour and a half video and then there was no sound for it. So I'm, uh, I'm hoping that's not what's happening right now. I tested everything and the levels seem right, but I'm it just because last time my attackers had switched the microphone from my webcam to whatever microphones attached to uh, when you when you plug in like a microphone to the computer. Uh, so there was no sound at all. Uh, I hope that doesn't happen this time, guys. All right, let me carry on. It's a, it's a very long article, which is great. Um, his second paper, I mean, they really go into the history of it and the guy who, like, you know, developed it and everything. Uh, his second paper in 1962 pinpointed the brain's receptor site as the temporal lobes, which extend beneath the temples. I, and I wonder if that's why I have so much pain in my jaw area over here. I have tons of pain in this area. Not so much on the right side sometimes, because sometimes they'll just, it'll be a ringing, that, well, constant ringing in both ears, usually, if I'm, if I'm listening to Dave Case's CD a lot, that's uh, way reduced and almost, uh, almost to nothing, but if I don't, um, if I don't, I'll sometimes get the, like, 15 seconds, almost like they're shooting a high-pitched sound at the side of your head and stuff like that, but mostly my left side uh, has a lot of inflammation and pain to it, and that's right below the temporal lobe. Um, okay, uh, uh, that processes nerve signals from the outer and in inner ears. I'm going to read that again because I, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, his second paper in 1962 uh, pinpointed the brain's receptor site as the temporal lobes which extend beneath the temples. Each lobe bears a small region, the auditory cortex, that processes nerve signals from the outer and inner ears. Investigators raced to confirm and extend Mr. Fry's findings. At first, they named the phenomenon after him, but eventually called it the microwave auditory effect, and in time, more generally, radio frequency hearing. Um, the Soviets took notice. Not long after his initial discoveries, Mr. Fry said he was invited by the Soviet Academy of Sciences uh, to visit and lecture. Toward the end, in a surprise, he was taken outside Moscow to a military base surrounded by armed guards and barbed wire fences. That's an interesting story. They had me visiting the various labs and discussing the problems, including the neural impacts of microwaves, Mr. Fry recalled. Mr. Fry recalled. I got an inside look at their classified program. So, I'm noticing something they're doing in this article right here. Uh, and I, I, I read, I read the first part of it and I knew I was just going to read the whole thing. So I didn't really go through the whole thing and I'm noticing right now, what are y'all noticing? 
I'm noticing that they're focusing on how it's probably Russian collusion with Cuba, and then they're talking about Fry being basically kidnapped by Russians to learn the secrets of microwaves, kind of positioning Russia as the person who's maybe doing this to all these embassy workers. They're the bad guys who are using this technology in the wrong way. Mm, that's really weird, uh, and I'm kind of seeing it here. Tell me if y'all see that, too. Uh, that may be the media's kind of spin on this, is that maybe Russia's hitting citizens in the United States with microwaves. Um, that's weird. This is, this is weird, uh, the way that this is going. But they are talking about it, so. Uh, Moscow was so intrigued by the prospect of mind control that it adopted a special terminology for the overall class of envisioned arms, calling them uh, psychophysical and psychotronic. Uh, Soviet research on microwaves for internal sound perception, the Defense Intelligence Agency warned in 1976, showed great promise for disrupting the behavior patterns of military or dip, uh, diplomatic personnel. Furtively, globally, the threat grew. The National Security Agency gave Mark S. Uh, Zaid, uh, a Washington lawyer who routinely gets security clearances to discuss classified matters, a statement on how a foreign power built a weapon designed, designed to bathe a target's living quarters in microwaves, causing numerous physical effects, including a damaged nervous system. The National Security Agency gave Mark S. Zaid, a Washington lawyer who routinely gets security clearances to discuss classified matters, a statement on how a foreign power built a weapon designed to bathe the target's living quarters in microwaves, causing numerous physical effects, including... Wow, they are really spinning this to where, oh, we didn't, it was a, you know, we're finding out all this stuff about national security, and we knew that Russia, you know, had this stuff. That's, that's really effing weird. Um, wow. Hmm. Mr. Zaid said, uh, hmm. Mr. Zaid said a, a NSA client of his who traveled there watched in disbelief as his nervous system uh, later unraveled, starting with control of his fingers. I have to say, I'm experiencing that right now. Like, my brain, like, the thought patterns are messed up because my nervous system has been run ragged, and I'm, like, super stiff. Like, my spine feels cooked and super stiff, and it's like my nervous system is just just uh you know and i you know we, we all target individuals talk about this just in your nervous system being fried um so i feel like that right now from extensive uh you know torture from these directed energy weapon systems uh microwave pulses to the head you know while asleep and everything um all right let me continue it's a very long article and it seems to have kind of uh gone down the staircase to, uh, you know, Russia being the bad guy who only has these weapons when, you know, our country and our military industrial complex has these weapons and are using them on our citizens. We'll see what the rest of the article says. I just, I just read the first thing and I knew I was going to have to do it, uh, you know, for the video and I was, uh, researching a bunch of information. I was like, well, I just want to just do the video. Uh, y'all know me. I can, you know, I can, come on here and look like a jackass but still get the uh, information out. <laughs> That's what I like about myself. Um, the high-pitched chirping that diplomats heard uh, while working at the Consulate uh, General of the United States in, in Gangzhou, China, might be explained by a phenomenon known as the Fry Effect, radio frequency hearing. So, and that's the uh, embassy in, in Guangzhou. Yeah, Guangzhou is how you say it. Okay, uh, Washington, too, foresaw new kinds of arms. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, okay, so now they're talking about uh, America, great. Uh, or actually the military-industrial complex, which I wouldn't consider really America. You know, it's kind of a, its own foreign country, um, its own little empire. Uh, Washington, too, foresaw new kinds of arms. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, Air Force scientists sought to beam comprehensible uh, speech into the heads of adversaries. Uh, their novel approach won a patent in 2002 and an update in 2003. Both were assigned to the Air Force Secretary, helping limit the idea's dissemination. So they wanted to limit the idea's dissemination. 
The lead inventor said the research team had experimentally demonstrated that the signal is intelligible. Uh, as for the invention's uses, an Air Force disclosure form listed the first application as psychological warfare. Uh, the Navy sought to paralyze. The fry, the fry effect was to introduce sounds powerful enough to cause painful discomfort and, if needed, leave targets unable to move. The weapon, the Navy noted, would have a low probability of fatalities or permanent injuries. Not if you use it for years and years on somebody. Like maybe if you just use it on them to incapacitate them in one day, in a couple of minutes, maybe it wouldn't leave you know permanent damage. But a lot of the target individuals who are being tortured with this stuff for decades, um, yeah, that's going to cause permanent damage to the nervous system and the brain. Um, I'm sorry, too much, too much editorializing. I really, I really wanted to get through this whole article. It's a very important article. And the uh, the link is up at the top. Um, in a twist, the 2003 contract was awarded uh, to microwave experts who had immigrated to the United States from Russia and Ukraine. It is unknown if Washington deploys such arms. Uh, not unknown by me, because I know it. <laughs> Uh, it is unknown if Washington deploys such arms, but the Pentagon built a related weapon known as the Active Denial System, hailing it in a video. It fires an invisible beam meant to deter mobs and attackers with fiery sensations. Okay. And here's the big Active Denial technology, like on top of a, a vehicle, a military vehicle that actually, you know... Um, propagates microwaves from that huge kind of dish looking thing at the top uh, but the the weaponry is way more sophisticated and compact and also you know it's like they can use it on a grid not just these huge devices on you know military vehicles um, as all target individuals know um, and there's many many different kinds of ground weapons you know that you can put on your shoulder uh, little black boxes that can emit certain uh, extremely low frequencies and things like that. Uh, that that's a good idea for video. I think I want to go through uh, some of the ground weapons that are actually sold just right out in the open public. Uh, and I think I'm going to go through that. That's some, that's a, uh, some more very, very good proof. Um, Russia, China, and many European states are seen as having the know-how to make basic microwave weapons that can debilitate, uh, so noise, or even kill. Uh, advanced powers, experts say, might accomplish more nuanced aims, such as beaming spoken words into people's heads. So anybody, I mean, look, this article is saying it. This, this is mainstream media saying the fry effect, the microwave hearing, the capability to beam voices into people's heads. And I'm sitting here I don't look crazy. I may look like I'm traumatized and my brain's being microwaved, but I'm saying that I experience voice through skull, not schizophrenia. Um, so, you know, and I'm noticing that there's not a lot of people on comments on Target Individuals videos anymore that are saying, hey, go take your meds, you're crazy. We're reaching a point where people understand that this is happening. Uh, the mainstream media is not there to uh, referee it, so we know exactly how many people are aware of it, but I think we are at a point where not a lot of people who are real, I think a lot of community-placed agents are still going to call us crazy and things like that. I think we're past the point of regular people disbelieving this. Um, and it may be kind of scary to them. It was scary to us, you know, scary to TIs. When we started experiencing this stuff out of nowhere, a lot more scary than just knowing that it's going on. Um, but... You know, I think that, that that's actually happening, which I think that's why this article's coming out, because they're understanding the public that it's like kind of common sense now that it's happening, so the media has to play catch up. And, well, I'm going to go over that later. I don't want to jump the gun, because um, Susie Dawson says a lot of things that like I kind of try and say sometimes. I don't know I do a pretty good job, but she is, you know, she's just a really brilliant person. Uh, Ramola D does a great interview with her and she, she says some of the things that have really inspired me and I've had thoughts that she has explained better like she has better words for them so I'm going to go through some of that uh, that kind of relates to mainstream media and why I think that now is the time where they're forced to actually talk about this not in any kind of you know dismissive way 
maybe a spin on it, but they're actually going to have to to go with certain facts and documentation that we're putting out, that that alternative news is putting out, that people know publicly. Uh, so this is a an awesome time for us. I I've been um, well. Let me let me finish the article. But I you know 2008 has been really hard for a lot of people. I've been kind of demoralized, like saying everything's so corrupt. Are we going to be able to do this? You know, um, but. You know, I'm seeing a lot, just tons of hope, tons of hope, real hope, not false hope, because I don't believe in false hope. Um, only intelligence agencies know which nations actually possess and use unfamiliar, uh, such unfamiliar arms. And basically all the five I countries do, and uh, even more after that. So a lot of people, if they're associating with America, Russia, or China, uh, or Israel uh, in their five eye country, they, they probably have this technology and they're probably using it on their citizens. Their military industrial complexes are probably using it on their citizens. So not just the five eye countries. Uh, the basic weapon might look like a satellite dish. In theory, such a device might be handheld or mounted in a van, car, boat, or helicopter. Microwave arms are seen as typically working uh, over relatively short distances across the length of a few rooms or blocks. Um, High-powered ones might be able to fire beams across several football fields or even for several miles. The episode in Cuba. Uh, the Soviet collapse in 1991. I might have to save some of the Susie Dawson stuff. Um, I'll just, I'll go through it. We'll get through it. I want to just, I'll just do a long video. Y'all can watch it in, in separate parts if y'all want. Um, okay, the episode in Cuba. Uh, the Soviet collapse in 1991 cut Russia's uh, main ties to Cuba, a longtime ally just 90 miles from the United States. The shaky economy forced Moscow to stop providing Havana with large amounts of oil and other aid. Vladimir Putin, as Russia's president and prime minister, sought to recover uh, the economic, political, and strategic clout that the Soviets had lost. And this, they really are trying to frame that they are. Wow, I'm see there the episode in Cuba. Now they're trying to describe it with like Russia is the main villain when they have no clue if that's what happened. They're not just reporting on the microwave weapons now. They're going to take people's attention off the fact that it's microwave weapons. By pinning Russia, I no editorializing. I just want to get through the article. Sorry, guys. Uh, wow, Vladimir Putin. Our mainstream media is just wow, like incredibly horrible. Uh, even when they do something right, like they they back it up with just a, you know, an awful thing to take your attention off of what they did right. Uh, Vladimir Putin, as Russia's president and prime minister sought to recover uh, the, the economic, political, and strategic clout that the Soviets had lost. In December 2000, uh, months after the start of his first presidential term, Mr. Putin flew uh, to the island nation. It was the first visit by a Soviet or Russian leader uh, since the Cold War. He also sought to resurrect Soviet work on psychoactive arms. In 2012, he declared that Russia would pursue new instruments for achieving political and strategic goals, including psychophysical weapons. That's really what they're trying to do. Wow, I didn't read the whole article, guys. Um, that's really what they're trying to do here. They're trying to frame frame it as like Russia is the bad guys with these weapons, and they're the ones who attacked all the embassy workers. Uh, wow, um, that's incredible. I thought I was re I thought I was seeing this miracle of truth by the mainstream media where they were just going to talk about microwaves as the main culprit in the attack of it. but then they're coming out with conspiracy theories against Russia uh, that have no basis because every nation is using these microwave weapons and they're singling out Russia which is not number 1 the United States is number 1 in non-directed energy weapon uh, manufacturing uh, and in the market Number two is Israel. Uh, then number three is Russia. So, wow. Uh, in July 2014, Mr. Putin again visited Cuba. This time he brought a gift, the cancellation of some $30 billion in Cuban debt. The two, nation, uh, two nations signed a dozen accords. 
A Russian spy ship, Viktor Leonov, docked in Havana on the eve of the beginning of reconciliation talks between Cuba and the United States in early 2015, and did so again in subsequent years. Uh, Moscow and Havana grew so close that in late 2016, the two nations uh, signed a sweeping pact on defense and technology cooperation. <clears throat> Holy shit. So there's Raul Castro, president of Cuba with Vladimir Putin, Russia's president, at a welcoming ceremony ceremony for Mr. Putin in Havana 2004. I can't believe what the fuck I'm reading here. Like, it, it's great that they're admitting that microwaves are the main culprit, but this is like the first article that I've seen where it definitively does that, and then they immediately try and frame this conspiracy theory that Russia and Cuba got together to attack uh, American embassy. Wow. Wow. Did, I did not expect that with this article. Uh, should have read it first. <laughs> I should have I read the whole thing first. Uh, but we're, we're going through it together, guys. We're going to get through this article together. I might have to do a lot more editorializing. Oh, man. It's taking me a lot longer. Okay. Might have to break some of that other stuff up and do another video. We'll see. We'll see. I'll go through as much information as I can get to since I'm since I'm going ahead and making a video right now. Um, as a candidate, Donald Trump faulted, uh, let's see, in Havana's Harbor, men fishing near the Russian warship Viktor Leonov in 2015. Um, as a candidate, Donald Trump faulted the Ob Obama administration's normalizing policy as a very weak agreement and threatened to scrap it on reaching the White House. Uh, weeks after he won the election in late November 2016, the American embassy in Havana found itself battling a mysterious crisis. Uh, diplomats and their families recounted high-pitched sounds in homes and hotel rooms, at times intense enough to incapacitate. Yeah, and I think all target individuals have experienced that. I'm actually experiencing that right now. Like my eyes, like I'm feel warmth here. They're shooting microwaves at my face, like in my eyes right now, as I'm doing this video. My attackers are shooting microwaves into my eyeballs as I'm doing this. But onward, onward. <sighs> okay. Uh, diplomats and their families recounted high-pitched sounds in homes and hotel rooms at times intense enough to incapacitate. Long-term, the symptoms included nausea, crushing headaches, crushing headaches, yes, uh, fatigue, dizziness, sleep problems, and hearing loss. The State Department uh, filed diplomatic protests, and the Cuban government denied involvement. In May, the FBI opened an investigation, and its agents began visiting Havana a half year after the incidents began. Uh, the last major one hit that summer in August, giving the agents relatively little time to gather clues. In September 2017, the Trump administration warned travelers away from Cuba and ordered home roughly half the diplomatic personnel. Uh, Rex W. Tillerson, who was then the Secretary of State, said the embassy staff had been targeted deliberately, but he refrained from blaming Cuba, and federal officials held out the possibility that a third party may have been responsible. In early October, President Trump expelled 15 Cuban uh, diplomats, producing a chill between the nations. Administration critics said the White House was using the health issue as a pretext to end President Barack Obama's reconciliation policy. The day after the expulsions, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee uh, held a closed, top-secret hearing on the Cuba situation. Uh, three State Department officials testified, as did, did an unnamed senior official of the Central Intelligence Agency. The hypothesis. So, this isn't the mainstream uh, media's conspiracy theory to vilify Russia, but this is their hypothesis. Oh, gosh. Okay, B this is Beatrice A. Golom, a medical doctor and professor of medicine at the University of California, San Diego, here in the Beachside office, argues that microwave strikes can explain the diplomatic ills. So now tons of experts are saying they were hit with microwaves. 
in their in their hotel rooms, in their separate hotel rooms, and I think at the embassy and in their cars and stuff like that. So listen to the claims of target individuals and then listen to these experts and mainstream media is, is saying these experts are saying that it's microwaves. Writing this article. Um, writing this article. Uh, early this year... Uh, hold on, guys. So it's a long... I think I'm just going to read this article for this video and then, you know, tomorrow do the video um, on Susie Dawson. It does kind of relate... To the media picking up these things but i i, I this took me for a, a into left field with what the, where they're going with this um i like i like it that they're admitting that it was microwaves um because target individuals were saying it the whole time and then this you know adds uh you know adds credibility to what we're saying uh because it's true but then this whole like they're going off on conspiracy theories when they probably don't know that russia had anything to do with it because you know our our mainstream media is really trying to vilify Russia right now, which Putin isn't the greatest guy in the world, but I don't know. I don't know if he's really trying to mess with anybody. I don't know. I don't know. I'll just keep reading it, and we'll just we'll go through this information, and then uh, you know you guys can comment on it and tell me what y'all think. Uh, this is great. It's great that they're admitting that it was microwaves and. I'll tell y'all, after I get done with the article, I'll tell y'all what somebody said on the conference call last night and something I had kind of thought, too, um, that we need to be doing. Um, early this year in January, the spooky impact of microwaves on the human brain never came up during an open Senate hearing on the Cuban, uh, Cuba crisis. Uh, but in a scientific paper that same month, oh gosh, my, eye, like my eyes are like burning right now. Like they're... Like, I feel heat right here, and they're just shooting microwaves into my eye. They usually don't do this when I make it. They usually just shoot a, a stream of energy to the top of my head to give me really bad headaches. But I guess I already had a bad enough headache, so they decided to just, just shoot me with microwaves in the eyes. It's really painful. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. <laughs> Early this year in January, the spooky impact of microwaves on the human brain never came up during an open Senate hearing on the Cuba crisis. No, that's not true. That's not true because Marco Rubio did bring it up. He did bring up the possibility that it could be microwaves. He called John Hall, who's an expert on targeting and uh, the microwave hearing effect, John Hall. Um, so that's actually false, but... Uh, but in a scientific paper that same month, James C. Lynn of the University of Illinois, a leading investigator of the Fry, uh, Fry effect, uh, described the diplomatic ills as plausibly arising from microwave beams. Dr. Lynn is the editor-in-chief of Bioelectric Magnetics, a peer-reviewed journal that explores the effects of radio waves and electromagnetic fields on living things. In his paper, he said high-intensity beams of microwaves could have caused the diplomats to experience not just loud noises, but nausea, headaches, and vertigo, as well as possible brain tissue injury. The beams he added could be fired covertly, hitting only the intended target. Mm -hmm. In February, ProPublica, in a lengthy investigation, mentioned that federal investigators were weighing the, the microwave theory. Separately, it told of an intriguing find. The wife of a member of the embassy staff at it had looked outside her home after hearing the disturbing sounds and seen a van speeding away. Mm. A dish antenna could fit easily into a small van. Uh, the medical team that studied the Cuban diplomats described the symptoms in March uh, uh, JAMA study to an unknown energy source that was highly directional. Let's read that again. Let's read that again. The medical team that studied the Cuba diplomats described the symptoms in March uh, JAMA study to an unknown energy source that was highly directional. Directed energy? Anyone? Anyone? Come on. Come on. Uh, some personnel, it noted, had covered their ears and heads but experienced no sound reduction. Uh, the team said the diplomats appeared to have developed signs of concussion 
without having received any blows to the head. Uh, in May, reports emerged that American diplomats in China had suffered uh, similar traumas. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo called the medical details of the two groups very similar and entirely consistent with one another. Uh, by late June, the State Department had evacuated at least 11 Americans from China. Uh, to date, the most detailed medical case for microwave strikes has been made by Beatrice A. Galam, a medical doctor and professor of medicine at the University of California, San Diego. In a forthcoming paper to be published in October in Neural Computation, a peer-reviewed journal of the MIT Press, she lays out potential medical evidence for Cuban microwave strikes. Uh, she compared the symptoms of the diplomats in Cuba, and we remember these names. Like, y'all get the link to this article. The, the names of all these experts, we need to be trying to contact them. James Lynn, this Dr. Galam, um, there was somebody else in there that we, we need to contact. Uh, we need to contact these people and tell them about our issues, and hopefully they will write about them in peer-reviewed articles, scientific journals. You know, so scientific journal documentation that what we're going through is real and, and provable, and then we can start getting medical testing. That's why I took that DTI. We this is this is a this is a, a pathway, guys. We got to bash through it, and we got to you know contact these people. I mean, we got to contact these people so that they can write scientific journals stating that there are target individuals in America that are going through this thing. They can do medical tests on some of us. And it's proof. I mean, so this is this is huge. I mean, all these people coming out of the woodwork, experts to say, you know, and there's been experts for a long time. I realize that, but I think with more and more, more and more, more and more are coming out. Uh, she compared the symptoms of the diplomats in Cuba to those reported for individuals said to be suffering from radio frequency uh, sickness. The the health responses of the two groups, Dr. Glom wrote, uh, conform closely. In closing, she argued that numerous highly specific features of the diplomatic incidents fit the hypothesis of a microwave attack, including the fry-type production of disturbing sounds. Scientists still disagree over what hit the diplomats. Last month, JAMA ran four letters critical of the March study, some faulting the report for ruling out mass hysteria. Now, I'd say that was a good, that's, that's like, that should get an award for ruling out mass hysteria because mass hysteria is the craziest conspiracy theory that I've ever heard in my life uh, for something like this. Uh, but Mr. Zay, the Washington lawyer who represents eight of the diplomats and family members, said microwave attacks may have injured his clients. Okay. It's sort of... Uh... Alright, hold on one second. Yeah. eyes hurt. Seriously, I mean, I know it look it, like that looks, I have to do that though because I feel actual heat from the external hits and I know there's actually probably some directed energy going to my head that, it, that I can't feel the heat on, um, but I get a lot of external hits in the eyes and the head and the neck and the jaw, uh, the back, like neck, like my upper back. Um, it's sort of, okay, hold on. I'm doing my best, guys. Like, I'm, my head is totally obliterated. I don't know how else to say it. Um, you know, and I I'm, I'm, don't have any adrenaline left. It's like my adrenaline has just been drained from my body uh, by just, you know, years and years of this torture and then the, and the Chatterbox V2K. So I'm, like, taking everything I got from the inside that it doesn't have to do with my body, it's like my spirit, and I'm trying to push along this flesh to, uh, you know, get more information out. But enough about my problems. Um, it's, <laughs> it's sort of naive to think that's just started now, he said. Uh, globally, he added, covert strikes with the uh, potent beams appear to have been going on for decades. Uh, Francisco Palmieri, a State Department official, was asked during the open Senate hearing if attacks against U.S. personnel in Cuba had been raised with Moscow. That is a very good question, Mr. Palmieri replied, but addressing it, he added, would require a classified setting. Uh, for his part, Mr. Fry says he doubts the case will be solved anytime soon. 
the novelty of the crisis, its sporadic nature, and the foreign setting made it hard for federal, federal investigators to gather clues and draw conclusions, he said, much less file charges. I just want to note that it's really interesting how when this first happened, they didn't talk to Mr. Fry. Like, the, the, uh, you know, they talked to James Lynn, but they didn't talk to the guy who actually invented uh, or, you know, was, was uh, um, what's the word? He was given credit for inventing uh, V2K. But now they're bringing him out when they want to implicate some kind of, you know, weird conspiracy about Russia being the villain with the weapons when every nation has them. Um, okay, so let's move on here. I did way too much editorial. Based on what I know, he remarked, it will remain a mystery. Wait, what? For his part, Mr. F uh, Fry says he doubts the case will be solved anytime soon. The novelty of the crisis, its sporadic nature of the foreign setting, made it hard for federal investigators to gather clues and draw conclusions, he said, much less file charges. Based on what I know, he remarked, it will remain a mystery. So it will, will remain a mystery of who did it, but not actually what it was. I guess that's what that's what he's saying. Okay, guys, um, that was pretty long. I didn't know it was going to be that long, but go ahead, y'all get the get the link uh, on the page, and y'all go and check this. It's a long article, uh, but they're saying microwaves are the main culprit. You know, Marco Rubio was looking into it uh, during the Senate investigation. He called John Hall, and I think he actually presented that to the Senate investigation team, like all the other people. Um, I guess I can go in, into the Susie Dawson stuff. Before that, uh, I wanted to say, like, last night on the conference call, um, who, who said it? Um, I can't remember who, who said it. Uh, shoot. Can't remember who said it, uh, but th he was saying that a good idea would be to um, man. And I talked to him a lot. Um, he was saying a good idea was if if we would call the New York Times because y'all remember how they wrote that hit piece on us uh, where they interviewed Timothy Trespass and they basically said that target individuals were were paranoid and we thought people were following us. And we thought we were being hit with with some kind of microwave weapons and it was all crazy. And then at the bottom, they actually put, like, John Hall in and some respectable people saying that it really exists. Um, but he was saying, and um, I, I'm, I really apologize, because I, I, I know I'm really good. Um, shoot. Uh, it's not James. It's not James. It's, uh, okay, I, maybe I'll remember it later, and I'll think about it, but... <laughs> I was thinking about that a little bit before too, um, and I think that's a good idea. I think we need to actually call the New York Times and say, "Can y'all, you know, go back and look back into the the claims of targeted individuals because it lines up exactly with this." Y'all are admitting that you know the attacks on the Cuban embassy and the China consulate were microwaves, and that's what targeted individuals are saying. Um, so there's a lot of avenues that we can go down based off of this, based off of this mainstream news story. Um, well, there's a lot of avenues we can go down even without it, but uh, but this is a huge hole opened up that we can run through. Um, and I guess I will. I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll just make it a long video. Um, I wish I could remember the name. Mm, that's horrible because I talk to him all the time. My, my brain is just really fried. Um, Okay, I'm, I'll, I'll remember it later. I mean, he's a really good friend and stuff, and I forgot his name. Wow. Okay, so I do want to go to some stuff. This is an interview um, This is an interview with Susie Dawson. Ramola D. did a great interview with her a while back. Let me see when it's from. I might not get to all, all the information I want to show on this interview, uh, but she's just really smart. I think she's still the leader of the Internet Party uh, in New Zealand. I think she's still lives in Russia. She had to move there. She was doing a lot better with the physical attacks, I think, but then I think I, I heard through the grapevine that she was being attacked again. So I'm not sure about that information, but this is from uh, the beginning of 2018. This is where I got a lot of information, especially, you know, the, the Wikipedia information. If you put in non-lethal weapons or directed energy weapons, there's tons of information on it. And uh, I got that from Susie Dawson. And also, uh, you know, 
you know, I've said a lot that, uh, you know, the mainstream media will eventually be forced, you know, to cover this. They will eventually be forced. They don't want to, like the people who, you know, uh, you know, hold the lead positions in these media corporations, they're part of the agenda. You know, they're going with the flow of the national security uh, agenda and the military industrial complex. But at, at a certain point in time, they have to. She explains it very well. I don't know if that's this clip, but we'll get to it. There's a couple of important things that she says. Uh, some of this may not have to do exactly with, uh, you know, mainstream media. It's it's some some stuff about uh, Edward Snowden and Julian Assange, uh, the ways to do research and things like that. But I just wanted to to let y'all listen to her and please come and watch. It's a three hour interview, and I went through it today to find some some little gems. And I think one of the next two videos, there's like 30 minutes that are just very very important. But uh, please go and check it out. Um, interviews with change makers for uh, Susie Dawson, international journalist and activist. And I just want to play a couple minutes here and then I'll move on to the next one. I can just post them on Twitter afterwards. It's all right. Yeah, if you want to have a look, I'll just have a scroll through um, what we've got here. Oh, yeah. So let's I do did. That. I wrote an article a couple of days ago. I'll share my screen. And if we just go to Steam it. Bear with me for a minute, I'll find it for you. So in this sure, article, yeah. the article is on a completely, well, it's actually on the Dutch topic, on the topic of what's going on in, in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. um, and at the bottom of that article, because most of my arguments in the article are related to findings from the Snowden files. Here we go. And at the bottom, I put, I just selected 10 of our top findings, but there were things that were really significant to me. So one of the things that, you often hear, I'll just take this off as I do an intro. One of the things you often hear uh, um, to discredit the Snowden Richard. files Richard is, is his name. oh, we heard that all Sorry. before. We Sorry. knew, or we knew that before. We knew the NSA was doing this. We knew about it. It's not news. Snowden didn't tell us anything. Well, I'll just tell you a couple of things about that. First of all, there is a huge difference between what we thought they were doing and what we said we thought they were doing with what they say they were doing in their own documents. When you have documents from the NSA. Okay, so this is something that, um, this is like some a smoking gun from the NSA basically saying uh, they did not, they wanted to be able to control the narrative of what happened on 9-11, you know, when the Twin Towers fell in, in World Trade 7. And it's smoking, uh, it's smoking gun proof that, you know, they actually wanted to control that. They didn't want, they didn't want the investigation coming from an outside source. They really wanted to control it, um, you know, because I think there are a lot of awful truths um, that we've all learned anyway uh, about, about what happened on 9-11. But that, that's what this is about. Telling you that they were doing it. That is a completely different level of verification and evidence than us what we think they were doing or what we had suspected they were doing. Absolutely. So, so what Snowden did is give the verified evidence that it was occurring. And that's what all of us needed because that took it out of the realm of conspiracy theory and into history, documented evidence. Now see, this is important what she says here. It took it out of the realm of conspiracy theory into documented history documentation things that these agencies say themselves those things are important because reporters have to report on those things they don't have to report on how we feel if we can't prove that we're being hit with something but documented fact and documentation they are forced to report on that so it's very important what she's saying we've got it we, I, and i think it, it's hap it's already happened and we've done this but we need to just do keep on doing it more and more bring this out out of the realm of conspiracy theory to history and we're doing that right now it's it's almost just been done you know completely and now it's like what how are people going to respond to it how are we going to fix it and everything like that um but but she goes on history because reporters won't report on what we think they're doing but reporters have to report on documented evidence of what they're doing and so that was the first major thing. The second thing I would say to people who make that claim 
is we did not know that JTRIG existed. We did not know there was a unit within GCHQ that was specifically tasked with making fake blog, site, blog sites about people destroying people's reputation, using psychological um, tools and manipulation against targets to discredit them. We did not know this stuff. Snowden gave us the proof. He gave us the methodology. He gave us the specific operational names and the units that were involved in doing this. And he got it all on permanent historical record in a way that can be referenced for generations to come. So that is the, the significance of the Snowden leaks. Now, what I've discovered since we've started analyzing the documents for ourselves is I've discovered what didn't make it into the reporting. And what that is, is that it is not just about surveillance and privacy. Um, uh, believe me, I was prepared to risk my life for privacy, for the issue of the right, human right to privacy and to fight against the surveillance. But what I've learned from studying these documents is that it's not just about privacy or surveillance. It is about control of the entire planet, the money, the countries, the entire infrastructure, the entire fabric of society is touched on in those documents. There are documents where they talk about how they want to influence the advancements of technology of private corporations, how they will prevent corporations from developing things they don't want them to develop and how they will in influence is the word they use. They want to influence the advance of technology in the commercial sector. This is way out of their purview, way out of their charter, way out of what they're supposed to be doing. And this, but this is what they're doing and what they admit to doing. So I'll quickly just take you through these 10 that are in my article. And I'm sure mm -hmm. if any of my friends or internet party people are in the chat, could you share the link to that article for people? That would be really helpful. So this is 10 things I found. I've linked to the source documents, so you can go and look for them yourself just by clicking on it. So the first one is that there was internal NSA resistance to 9-11 Commission and Senate Intelligence Committee's oversight. Now, these committees had been tasked with reigning in the NSA, holding them responsible for their uh, practices. So this guy in the NSA, who was from this congressional liaison office, mm -hmm. said, and I quote, The Congressional Committees investigating the attacks of September 11th, the 9-11 Commission and the Senate Intelligence Committee have all complained of NSA overclassifying too much information, which prevents it being FYA'd or getting into the public sphere. My worry, this the, the, the NSA employee guy, my worry is that a consensus is building within Congress that they need to take action to deal with this. Trust me, we don't want that. Direct quote from NSA, and he's talking to the entire NSA workforce. This doc So so this this person from the NSA is saying, you know, the Congress wants to get involved. You know, Congress wants to get involved with this investigation. Trust me, we don't want that. Document is from the Sid Today files, which is an internal publication of the NSA. So this is an NSA, NSA guy from the Congressional Liaison Office it's telling the entire NSA workforce, trust me, we don't want the 9-11 Commission and Senate Intelligence Committee to force us to declassify documents about what we are doing. We need to address this issue so that the solution is one of our creation and not one that is imposed on us from the outside. So this is the wow. absolute documented, verified evidence that Absolute the- Absolute smoking gun here, you know, the NSA, solution. That the NSA was internally resistant to the oversight mechanisms that are legislatively imposed upon them, that are supposed to set the bounds of what it is that they're doing. One of the other findings that I didn't actually list it in this top 10 of my article, but one of the other findings that we made was that they- This, this coming up, what she talks about is really important to understanding um, how things like this happen, like how things like uh, people start getting, uh, you know, non-consensual experimentation or tortured because these agencies find out, well, some of them find out that what they're doing is completely immoral and it's against the rules. 
So then what they do is they just change the rules. They don't start doing what's right within the rules. They just rewrite the rules so they can keep doing whatever immoral or corrupt thing that was going on. So it's, it shows how much power these agencies like the NSA, CIA, uh, you know, the Pentagon, uh, the DOD have because they start doing these corrupt things with no, like, illegally. And then they're like, wait, we're doing something illegal. Well, let's just go ahead and change the rules so we can keep doing this illegal thing. And I think she'll explain. <laughs> they have, um, sorry, I just dragged this over so I can stop the share for a second. They have these directives, intelligence directives, that are supposed to be their internal rules for what they are and are, are not allowed to do. Well, they realized that they were doing all of these things which weren't in their directives. So what do you think they did? Do you think they went and told Congress, oh, actually, we've been doing things that aren't in our directives? No. They wrote a letter to all their staff and said, we've identified that we're doing things that aren't in our directives. So we've decided to revise our directives. So now someone is going to come to you and we are going to update our intelligence directives to reflect what it is that you're doing. So they changed the rules to make to allow what they've already been doing instead of changing what they're doing to be within the rules. And this is the attitude of the NSA. This is that is just absolutely the attitude of the NSA. It's also what we see with these law changes because the law changes are retroactive. They were already mass surveilling people before they had the laws in place to mass surveil them. Absolutely. They're doing it everywhere. And, you know, it's the same kind of thinking with the parallel construction that the FBI uses. Yes, absolutely. And one of the things that we've been asking ourselves now is we know the FBI does parallel reconstruction, but does that mean that the other NSA customers also do it? For example, going back to that Department of Agriculture example that we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. the Department of Agriculture isn't allowed to tell its own customers, be that Monsanto or whoever else, where they got information from. Just like the FBI can't even tell a court that they got information from the NSA, that's why they do parallel reconstruction, which means they already know something's a fact. In Decipher You, we use the example, we always make me the target. We said, Susie, the NSA told the FBI that Susie has a safe in her house with diamonds in it, something in it, gold in it, whatever. Okay? The FBI can't tell a court Susie has a safe with diamonds in it. So the FBI said, you know, sends someone around to my house and says, um, we are here because we believe you've copy, you've uh, violated copyright on some DVDs that you have in your lounge. So we have a search warrant. We can oh, break yeah. those DVDs. And, oh, look, we just happened to have found a safe with diamonds in it while we were looking for the DVD. And then they go to the court and say, when we raided her house for her DVDs, we happened to find the safe with this, the diamonds and gold in that. Okay, that's parallel reconstruction. So they. Okay, and, and parallel reconstruction actually goes further on targeted individuals, but I, because I think that some of these FISA courts, they're actually lying. They're lying about the targeted individual. They're just making up some crime that they never committed. And then they're investigating and getting into our lives, you know, getting warrants to do all this surveillance or whatever that goes alongside the actual directed energy weapon torture. So it's actually like what she's saying is true there, but it's actually worse. Uh, it's, it's gotten worse where it's like somebody is doing nothing. They're surveilling them and seeing that they're doing nothing, but then they just make up stuff so they can get more surveillance on them. Um, let's go to the next thing. Let's see, that's 106. Go through a couple more things. I think this is where she talks about snow. Yeah, apparently so, because that's yeah. what they do, stuff. right? Really I mean, they fire hold fire. up people whom they want to promote because those people are doing things they consider quote unquote safe, right? Whereas... And the thing with Snowden is the thing people need to understand with Snowden, because then they think, well, Snowden's got so many accolades that that means that he must be a fake because otherwise how would he get all of this attention this everything else there's a few factors that you need to consider first is that when snowden first came out he was not given accolades he was not given awards he was not held up by the media we were told that he was the coward that fleed that he wasn't like manning who at least stood up and took the punishment that he was the oh, coward right, that right, I read that. You know, when you look at the people who supported Snowden in the first days of 
what was happening with him in Hong Kong, Michael Hastings. Michael Hastings, 20 of his last 40 tweets, or somewhere thereabouts, at least 50% of his most recent tweets on his timeline, were pro-Snowden, standing up for Snowden at a time that almost nobody else was. And at that same time, Michael Hastings was investigating the director of the CIA. And Michael Hastings' car was blown up on a Los Angeles Boulevard at the end of June in 2013, about three weeks I, I just want to throw in here that I think that Michael Hastings' car was remotely controlled. Like, they actually used, like, you know, hacking or whatever to actually get into the controls of his car and then, you know, take over control of the car, uh, you know, to wreck. I think that's how it was done. I'm not sure. They may have just hit him with a missile, you know, from a helicopter, but he was definitely murdered because he had huge information. He was investigating Snowden, you know, before anybody else was, but then he was also investigating the CIA and misconduct in the CIA. So I just wanted to kind of add that. After Snowden had come out into the public sphere, it was not popular to support Snowden when Snowden was on the run and when he was in Shiremetyeva and here in Moscow. It was not safe to support Snowden. It was an extremely dangerous time. We didn't know whether Ed would even live. We did not, we had no guarantee whatsoever that he would even live to see the following month. What happened is that Glenn successfully broke the story into mainstream media in a way that could not be ignored. So when they cannot black it out and when there is already enough of a cacophony growing because John Cusack put out that first pro Snowden piece that was the first major public piece to say, I'm on Snowden's side at a time when Snowden was being called a traitor and people were calling for his head and he was considered a dead man. Well, he was literally considered a dead man walking. Really the chance, the odds of him even surviving in those days were like this. People took for granted that they were going to wake up and hear on the news killed or captured. Like that was just the belief because it was so, there was not the huge support for him. Everyone thought it was, that was just an inevitable thing that was going to happen. And thank God it didn't. Um, the, when the media cannot control what is happening, they find a way to seize the narrative. Okay, and we just saw that. We actually, I didn't know that we were going to actually be experiencing that with the, with the new article from the New York Times, but we're seeing that. We're seeing that there's so much hubbub about directed energy weapons, about targeted individuals, about these Cuban, the Cuban embassy attack and the China, embassy, the China consulate attack. There's a lot of hubbub about it. People know that directed energy weapons are being used on people. Um, so we saw the mainstream media come in and they're reporting it. This is microwave. But then to control a narrative about like Russia, uh, collusion with Russia and Cuba. So they're, they're going to they're going to slide like they're going to slither like snakes and they're going to spin stories and everything like that. They're going to tell half truths. They're going to say, well, microwaves were used, but hey, look at this hypothesis about Russia doing it and all this crap um, to, to control a mainstream narrative, what they want the people to think. So we're going to have to fight against that. We're going to get some big wins with mainstream media where they have to report it, what she's saying, when because they'll they'll lose credibility with, with the public, if they don't report things that are common knowledge in the public and the public knows they're going on, then the, the media loses complete credibility and they can't spin their lies and the public believe all the other lies that they're telling. Um, so it's really important what she says here. I, I watched this, uh, um, I think I watched it when it came out and a lot of things she said really inspired me and I had had those thoughts in my head like the mainstream media is eventually going to be forced to, you know, to go with this they're eventually going to be forced to tell the truth because it's the truth and people are going to keep on learning that it's the truth and it's going to keep spreading and they're not going to be able to control it so then they try the next level of control okay well we have to talk about it we still want to control the mainstream narrative about it um they're, they're forced to do that so the way that they were able to seize and control the snowden leaks was by embracing snowden so if you remember, he didn't even talk to the media. For six months, he wanted nothing to do with them. He didn't do a single interview, nothing. So Glenn's reporting was churning out. This independent reporting was churning out. 
the Washington Post and New York Times and others were reporting on some documents and some findings. But the majority of what you learn from the Snowden files, you will never read in the Washington Post or the New York Times or in the Guardian. Now, remember what the Guardian did. The Guardian left Snowden in Hong Kong. They left him for dead. They took the documents and the reporting and they left him for dead in Hong Kong. They did not give him any assistance or help whatsoever. Literally, they flew the editor back to London with the documents. When GCHQ raided the Guardian, which in itself is another sign, the fact that the Guardian was actually raided by them, then they participated in the destroying of the hard drives. So the Guardian became complicit with the destruction of, yes. of, of yes. the documents. Okay. So these are all telltale signals that Snowden was legit. So the when Snowden broke out and, and really got a lot of support coming out, he didn't even come out to the media until already WikiLeaks had been organizing for six months to get people on his side to give him enough safety and enough of a platform. Sarah didn't leave Moscow for four months. She stayed here with him with Ed for in hand help because imagine the state, imagine the emotional state that you would be in having gone through something like that. You know? Yeah, and I she think said that's the main thing that I know. wanted to show y'all from that clip. Um, that's really important. Um, about like when when something there's just so much uh, you know, so much awareness out about it, people are interested in about it, people are not being fooled, they know it's the truth, and the mainstream media has to cover it. They try and uh, kind of, uh, kind of, uh, you know, elevate, you know, people involved so that they can control, they can control that narrative. Um, and let's see, I don't remember what she says in this one. Okay, I think this video right here, uh, this clip is super important. She's talking to targeted individuals, so I'm going to try not to do too much editorialization. I just wanted to mirror this content and it may be pretty long. It may be a couple of minutes. Uh, I think it's like about 30 minutes of, ooh, man, time just flies by on this. Um, I think it may be about 30 minutes, but it's really important stuff, stuff that inspired me. Um, but but let's just let's just hear Susie Dawson. Through the um, direct energy weapons findings, because I know that your target audience really your your biggest area of support is in the ti community and there have been many complaints that journalists will not cover directed energy weapons or what is happening to targeted individuals obviously anyone who's seen my documentary knows that i was target i am a targeted individual and certainly was when i was in new zealand i say was in the sense that since i've been in russia i have not been physically subjected to the abuse and attacks that I was being subjected to in New Zealand. I'm That's I heard that that changed. I, I heard it through the grapevine, so I'm not exactly sure, but I heard that she wasn't getting some of the uh, directed energy weapon attacks when she was in Russia. She was getting cyber attacks and things like that. But then I heard that they started hitting her again. I'm not really sure about that. If somebody knows, well, you know, I'll try and get in touch with somebody who knows what's going on with Susie Dawson. She's really awesome. I'm not sure if she's still the leader of the internet party. I assume she is um, very strong, very powerful. This information right here that she's going through is just super, super important for us. There's a lot more in WikiLeaks that I haven't shown in my videos um, that she goes through, and she explains it very well, how they even censor some of this information in the market reports. Excellent. I'm so glad to hear that. And I'm attacked. My reputation is attacked. Um, in the same way, but I'm not physically subjected to the physical attacks that I was in New, Ze in New Zealand. Wonderful. So I wanted to, I, I mean, I'm not sure if when you asked me if I'd do this interview, if you thought that I was going to. The reason that I said yes is for, for several reasons. First, because I wanted to show the TI community that there are journalists who do care. And I could have thought to myself, oh, no, 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 I, I must not be associated with people talking about conspiracy theories. But I think it's more important to show that journalists are prepared to be open minded and that there are journalists who have done this type of work on these types of topics so that the TI community knows that they are not alone and that there are people who listen and do care. But my message to the TI community is twofold. First of all, 
You cannot sit and wait for other people to cover your situations. You have got to do it yourself. I'm a journalist because I had to become a journalist to get the information out. You guys have to become journalists to get your information out. I can sit here and talk about my experiences, what I went through, what I have learned, but I can't talk about your experiences. I can't talk about what you go through and I can't talk about what you have learned. The second thing that I would teach you is how you will get from conspiracy theory to documented historical fact is by not just talking about the emotional effects on you and things, which, I mean, it's important for people to understand, to have empathy, that you're being hurt, but it's more important for you to find these documents that are already in the public record and to use those documents to support your case and to show people what is happening. Because when you can enter documents onto a court record, when you can give documents to reporters, this is exponentially more powerful than just giving them a narrative about your experience, right? So my documentary was powerful because I could back it up. Here's photos of my slash car tire. Here's photos of my burned out car engine. Here's, you know, social media tweets from the day it happened about what happened to me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This type of evidence is extremely, extremely important. Now, I'm going to show you guys the biggest gift that WikiLeaks has ever given to targeted individuals, which has gone under the radar for far too long. And yeah, I just... And this is some stuff that I've showed y'all in my videos, but, um, you know, she goes way more in depth with it in the explanation of how much these market reports cost. Um, and she did a lot of really good research instead of just showing the market report. She pulled things that we can logically know. Uh, that we can know uh, for certain from what these market reports say about non-lethal weapons technologies. I just want to say, I totally understand that to try and be a journalist and study documents and do build a following in a platform when there are people literally trying to kill you is an incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult mm. task when it feels like you're being attacked on all fronts, when you're being undermined at every turn, with everything you do, they are electronically interfering with every other possible method of interference. I understand because I've been there. I have been there. I did not have the resources of agencies. I had nothing, nothing. And every bit of reporting I did, I did in spite of what they were doing to me. So somehow you've got to dig down inside yourself, even though you feel like you are literally, they're going to do you in any day now. You've got to find within yourself the will to do this work that I'm about to show you and to circulate this information for your benefit and for the benefit of other people. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to share screen and we're going to go to decipheru.com. Now, Decipher You is a, one of the things I learned very early on is that I could not rely on any of my websites to stay up. So mm -hmm. all of my original work published on a site called Occupy Savvy, it was my media team website. And because all of our work was on that one site, that site was getting constantly interfered with, the domain was constantly going down, et cetera, et cetera. So I learned to decentralize. So you'll find my work on a whole bunch of different platforms because I learned I can never rely on a single domain or a single platform. So always decentralize your work. Save everything that you do in archive.org or in archive.is. You must have multiple links and references. When you write an article, save all of your source links in archive.org and publish the archive.org link on your article. Don't use the native link or the, of the, the native domain of the website to the source because otherwise it can be tampered with and taken down and then your article's no good. Use the archive.org links. That's so, brilliant. So Decipher You is a site I set up specifically for information that I'd found within the Snowden files, within the WikiLeaks files, um, and some reviews of Field of Vision content. So, this is, I consider, one of the biggest findings I've ever made. It has never, ever been reported on by any other media, even though I wrote it several years ago. So we are looking at Hacking Team. This is from the Hacking Team Leaks for WikiLeaks. Hacking Team is an Italian contracting agency, a hacking agency. Their customer list includes police agencies and intelligence agencies from around the world. 
Now, Hacking Team Less Lethal Directed Energy Weapons Tested and Now Operationally Feasible. The existence, and this is my writing in red, the existence of directed energy and electronic weapons has long been considered conspiracy theory or science fiction. Yet emails linked, so we're going to open that link, from defense companies to the Italian mercenary hackers hacking team leaked to WikiLeaks. We're going to open that as well. Confirm that. Both directed energy weapons and electronic weapons do exist. I'm going to open that link. Not to be confused with laser weapons now in military use, they're in fact categorized less lethal. This doesn't mean they're not lethal. It means this is how they're marketed by the manufacturers as being less lethal and or non-lethal weaponry specifically marketed to domestic law enforcement agencies. The weapons have been tested. The manufacturers admit they have been tested. The weapons are now operationally feasible for the first time. Bear in mind, we're not talking about now in 2018. We're talking about now in the emails themselves, which we will examine together in a minute. And I just want to throw in like that. That's just one angle of why they're, you know, experimenting with directed energy weapon systems and neuro weapons on non-consensual uh, human experiments or people who are surviving non-consensual human experimentation. This is an angle of it that they develop these weapons. The manufacturers develop these weapons for mass uh, mass sales to law enforcement. In, in America, in other countries, other countries are doing these similar programs to sell law enforcement in that country these uh, less than lethal, less than lethal, non-lethal weapons. So that's part of the experimentation is for that. Uh, and it's still continuing on to make the weapons, I guess, more, um, to make them smaller, to make them uh, uh, more efficient energy-wise, um, things like that. So, which is years ago. The emails include a comprehensive list of companies who manufacture the weapons, including companies who manufacture tasers and other law enforcement weapons, which means these weapons have been developed by the same suppliers of law enforcement and intelligence hardware as all the other weapons that are known about in the public sphere, like the beanie bag shotguns and the gas canisters and everything else. They're all coming from the same place. The emails include a comprehensive list of law enforcement agencies to whom the weapons are being marketed. So we know who's making them and who they're selling them to. The emails state that the weapons are being rolled out, delivered to customers in the period 2014-2024. So that means they were developed, manufactured, tested prior to 2014, but they are commercially landing on the doorsteps of the customers 2014 to 2024. The emails state that the weapons, uh, sorry, the em weapons are classified as electronic warfare. Now this will become very significant in a few minutes. In fact, I'm actually just going to quickly search up my most recent tweet about electronic warfare and you'll see why it becomes significant. The mainstream has yet to acknowledge that such weaponry is in play. The reason for the restriction of the official information confirming the existence and deployment of these weapons to date appears to be money. So what I'm saying is money is how they've prevented the existence of these weapons from being known by the mainstream and you're about to know why it's money. In the emails to Hacking Team, marketing company Vision Gang Defense offers to sell Hacking Team a business report. Company-wide access to that business report cost 7,000 British pounds or 8,800 euros for one document. When have you ever heard of a document costing 8,800 euros to read a document? It's outrageous. The reason it costs 8,800 euros is because the information that it contains is information that is not in the public sphere, that is not in the mainstream. And how they prevent it from getting into the mainstream is because if you can't spend 8,800 euros to buy this report, and if you aren't a registered law enforcement, security or intelligence agency, it's not available to you anyway. So they use money. Money creates the barrier for the information. Those who have the money get the information. 
Those who don't have the money do not get the information. So those who have the money and the clearance, uh, you know, get information on this and those who don't do not get the information. That's another form of censoring the information. There's many blocks uh, in censoring of this information of these directed energy weapon systems, but that's one of them. That's one kind of, I guess, I, I guess I don't know if you call it simple, but if you're not one of the agencies involved and you don't have the money, then you can't get the report. You know, it's not out for just public consumption. It's another wall, like she says. The teaser for the report content states, New developments in technology have made directed energy weapons operationally feasible for the first time. The operationally feasible meaning law enforcement agencies and intelligence agencies can actually use them in operations, which is separate from the defense manufacturers testing programs, which occurs prior to the commercial side. Though recent pressures on defense and law enforcement budgets have placed a strain on research and development and acquisition budgets, the testing of new technology has shown good results. Isn't that sick? That is sick. I mean, that, they say it right there. The testing of these weapons has shown good results. So that means they've used them on, they have to use them on people. Like if they're going to sell them to law enforcement and know that they're going to work on for crowd control or, you know, to stop a criminal or whatever, and they've had to have been tested on humans. Dot, you know, connect the dots, connect the dots there. And is likely to be further funded. So they will continue to fund research and testing of these weapons on human beings. Furthermore, the acquisition of non-lethal systems is likely to be given priority status by many law enforcement departments to deal with the increasing number of civil unrest situations. That means that directed energy weapons have been specifically developed for the anticipation of civil or the anticipated civil unrest that is occurring worldwide as a result of massive global income inequality. This is how they intend to deal with the masses of humanity that have been left with nothing. This is the 1% plotting to control the 99 percent the synopsis continues on to claim that it contains details of 202 contracts that have already been awarded for the supply of direct directed energy weapons and less less lethal programs worldwide it goes on to state that energy weapons testing continues and alarmingly that there is relatively low regulatory pressure for procurement. What that means, I'm just going to go on a little rant here for a second, so let's take this off. What that means is that there are no laws in place to control the buying and selling of these weapons because no one knows they exist yet, so there's no public pressure to regulate them or control them. And therefore, at this time, being back in whenever this was written, which we'll see the exact date in a minute. At this time, they were able to do whatever the hell, sell them to whoever they want, ship them to whoever they want. So they're telling the customers, get in quick now while there's no laws to control us. It's literally what you're right. Yeah. You know, some of this information I have, I have had access to through military documents. So some of this information is contained in military documents and also from some reports from the DOJ on crowd control technologies, also from some yeah. UK documents that I've looked at, you know, crowd stuff. control know technologies. Guys, but, but the thing that's really more. extraordinary that you're pointing out is that is the emails, the content of the emails actually spelling out the lists of the law enforcement agencies to yes. whom these weapons were marketed. I'd love to see that list. In fact, I'd love to report on it. No. I'd love to find out from you how to get there because I'd like to report on this. It's huge. It's huge because they name the manufacturers and they name the customers. That's absolutely huge. There are multiple further references to civil unrest in relation to the development of the weapons. So here we go. These are the programs. This is the list of programs that are employing this. And this stuff, these section numbers are inside that report that you're talking about. That report, which is contained in the WikiLeaks files, which you'll see shortly. So they've got the US Department of Defense, US non-lethal research and development programs, which are suspended, which are postponed, which are delayed, and which are in testing now. The United States non-lethal weapons market drivers and restraints, contracts and programs, 
Israeli non-lethal weapons market forecast, Israeli national non-lethal weapons market overview, Israeli non-lethal weapons analysis. These are on WikiLeaks, so just have a think about this, everybody who says WikiLeaks doesn't publish about Israel. What you're reading right now, now tell me that WikiLeaks doesn't publish about Israel. De-emphasizing no, lethal force this, this whole report is the whole report on WikiLeaks. We will, I'll take you through the source documents as soon as we finish this. It's not very long, it's only a short bit more, but oh, it's okay. important. Um, so, the Israeli directed energy weapons. Okay, this is the information, and y'all have seen me go to that WikiLeaks page and, and type in non lethal weapons, then it shows that market report from 2014 to 2025 or whatever. This is her reading and, and, and doing her own report on that information uh on the site uh i don't i don't know what the site was called anymore i gotta go back i gotta go back and look at what that site was but this is her um her research on what she gleaned from those from those market reports from those uh, i guess it was really um not the full market report but the outline of the market report development is really oh sorry where are we now chinese chinese non-lethal weapons market forecasts market overview and weapons analysis so they've sourced they've got they've got this research this is global this is from the us to china to israel this is global these people are all buying and selling together this is this is not just like one political faction or another political faction it's it's global. I said to you right, you know, how long ago the militaries control the world. This is the evidence that the militaries control the world. And they're boasting about the fact there's no laws to stop them. According to Vision Gain, the leading companies involved with directed energy weapons programs, which presumably involves the development and testing of the weaponry, are these are the manufacturers, BAE Systems PLC, which is British, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. Ball Corporation, the Boeing Company. So US, General Dynamics US, Kratos Defense and Security yeah. Solutions, Lockheed Martin Corporation, Northrop Grumman Corporation, and the Raytheon Company. Vision Gain names the companies supplying. So those are the manufacturers. Now we're into the suppliers. These are the people who buy from the manufacturers and sell to the commercial outlets. Vision Gain names the companies supplying the weaponry as being Aardvark Tactical, Brugger and Thomit AG. Condor Non-Lethal Technologies, Lampard Less Lethal Inc, Mace Security International. These are the people who make all of the current police issue weapons. Non-Lethal Technologies Incorporated, Pepperball Technologies, the Safari Land Group and Taser International Incorporated. This paragraph is really- Countless cool. citizens, were, so the people who are behind the directed energy weapons, or the people who are making money off them are the same people who make money off pepper spray and tasers and all the other horrible, torturous crap they've already developed. And the people making it are the same people who make bombs and airplanes and- Grenades and missiles and- Countless citizens worldwide have taken to their personal blogs and YouTube channels to talk about their experience of being targeted individuals, claiming that they have had such weaponry used upon them. To date, they have been discredited by psychologists who deride such claims as being the result of mental illness, <coughs> which is the most common tactic, is that you report your experiences and they hospitalize you and call you crazy. But this document proves that it's been happening all along. To study reports of victims, web search targeted individuals direct energy weapons. There are extensive re resources, victim support groups, and countless first-hand accounts available online. So that, that's an interesting way that they say it. Um, uh, to date, they have been discredited by psychologists who deride such claims as being the result of mental illness. Like it's almost like something for the investors and people who are interested in you know in manufacturing or you know investing in the manufacturing and the research and development of these weapons they're basically saying today you know psychologists are discrediting all the people who are researching uh that we're you know experimenting on so it's cool you know we're not getting caught or anything like that. i think i thought i thought that was very interesting the verbiage right there now we go to wikileaks if you go to WikiLeaks and you search the hacking team release, that is this page here. Uh-huh. And mm -hmm. you search on directed energy, which is the search term that I use to find this. Okay. Then these are all of the emails that you get the results. I see. That you get. So you can go through and yeah. 
So you had- can you can yourself sit here and read about all these different forecasts and market reports. So mm-hmm. you can see them, they're in reverse chronological order. So the most recent one was, oh, this one, 24th of March, 2015. Mm-hmm. But we're tracking back here through 2014. And you can read. And I know I'm just mirroring this information right now, guys, but this is so, this, this information is really important. So I'm gonna let it go for a couple more minutes. Um, so you guys can just see this. You can go watch the interview yourself. Um, but just in case you aren't, you know, I want to let it go because she says some some more very, very important stuff, talking to the target individual community. A lot of stuff that really inspired me, even though I was already making videos at the time, inspired me to, we, we got to promote each other's information. And, you know, almost from, from what she said and, you know, some other things, it's like if somebody has a good interview or anything, I'm just going to mirror it on my channel. We're going to promote each other because I think that some target individuals maybe stuck in the in the um in the old archetype of information that if somebody does an interview or something or there's a an article out it's like okay well that's out and i saw it and that's it but this is new this is a new battle it's a new information battle where we're going to be fighting uphill against the mainstream media so we need to promote each other we need to become our own reporters like like susie said Read every single one you can see. You, I mean, this is the thing. You want to tell me WikiLeaks is a limited hangout. They even published the email addresses. They've even got the names of who's sending it to who and which company. This is from Vision Game Defense, vgdefense.com, to hackingteam.it, which is the Italian hacking team company. Mm-hmm. And you can sit there and you can read all the way through it. That's pretty sad. Directed stunning. energy, how Ryan Miller makes the impossible possible. Look at, how's that for a slogan? Right, metal. Interesting. How's that? They're making the impossible possible. Yeah, they do think they're gods, don't they? As they continue to develop and test directed energy applications for military use. On and on and on it goes. So you can sit there and read through every single one. Battle mm-hmm. space update, exhibitions. So that takes me to this. Remember how it said at the top that it was part of the electronic warfare program? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Guess who was placed in charge of the electronic warfare program? Michael Hayden, huh? General Michael Hayden. And it's interesting. I wish I had, uh, I might show the video on another, um, on another video, but uh, I think Tyrone Dew was asking him questions and some other guys, uh, Brian Marks and some other people went and asked him questions again uh, about electronic warfare, about directed energy weapons being used on citizens. And he's like, I don't know. I know that, you know, they're directed energy weapon, program, but I don't know anything that you're talking about. Like he, he basically just claims ignorance on the whole thing. And he's in charge of electronic warfare. Uh, in the CIA. So, I mean, he's a liar. General Michael Hayden. Or Gen- I don't know if he's in the C- General Michael Let's Hayden. Let's move this down so you can see it properly. Including computer network attack and defense, psychological operations, military deception, electronic warfare, and operation security. Mm-hmm. And how, what are we looking at right now? We are looking at an NSA document from the Snowden files. That's right. You know, they've also put it under information operations. They've got a lot of document documents talking about information warfare and information operations, I.O. Psychological operations is a, is a part of electronic warfare. That in itself is is a major connector that connects okay, guys, to I'm major things. Okay, guys, I'm about two hours, so please just come and watch uh, this whole interview in its entirety. She says a lot. Of, I think she says some things even after this, uh, you know, speaking directly to targeted individuals and things like that, some important things. But I do kind of want to hit one more thing. Um, I actually had, had a lot more stuff, um, but I'll, I'll move that to another video. But I do want to go over this last little clip she says something really important about, um, you know, why the mainstream media had to actually report on, you know, what Snowden did. 
and it, it really relates to now the situation with targeted individuals, the situation with microwaves being used on embassy workers, and what they're kind of forced to do. So please delve into how WikiLeaks got onto mainstream media. That is a very fascinating question because that will lead you down the path of yet again why WikiLeaks is legitimate. WikiLeaks has been screwed over by every major media organization in the world. The Guardian published decryption keys to WikiLeaks files, literally published them in a book, which WikiLeaks was then accused of endangering sources over. If you hear all of this nonsense about WikiLeaks published um, or didn't publish, uh, evidence of a uh, Russian VTB bank transferring or receiving $2 billion from some Syrian thing that wasn't in the Syrian files. That whole shebang tracks back to FBI uh, informant Hector Sabu Monsegur. There's absolutely zero proof that the documents that that FBI um, informant says existed ever existed. All WikiLeaks emails are cryptographically verified. There's been no headers for the emails that he says uh, that the FBI guy says were taken out of the files. They've never provided the header information for those emails. There's been no way to verify whether or not they even existed. So there's so much disinformation circulated about them. Now, WikiLeaks was initially brought into the media fold for collateral murder for the same reason that Snowden was brought into the media fold, as I discussed earlier in this episode. Collateral murder and those the Manning releases we're going to go around the world anyway. And at the point at which the media realizes they're on the back foot, they try to catch up. They try to catch up to save their own credibility. And once they feel like they're involved and caught up, and WikiLeaks, I mean, the WikiLeaks commits to getting, they literally say it on their website, they commit to getting the maximum possible exposure for the information that their sources have risked their life for. So WikiLeaks agreed to work with mainstream media to get to maximize that exposure and they got burned across the board just like new york times burned them it just came out a couple of weeks ago wikileaks tweeted out the proof from the dns new york times has burned us a lot um so we've got to expect that they're going to be reporting some things truthfully and then bringing it off into something else um it, you know, hope for the best, uh, prepare for the worst. Um, hopefully they will report it, uh, you know, truthfully and, you know, any of their reporting on, on the truth, we can bring it the rest of the way. We can tell people, you know, about what they're not reporting and then make them report even more truth, you know. See files that a New York Times reporter was actually leaking the WikiLeaks publication schedule and what they were leaking on. Uh, what Manning's leaks were, the publication schedule for those leaks, to Hillary Clinton at the State Department when she was Secretary of State. So the mainstream media were, were acting as agents, saboteurs, informants, when they worked with WikiLeaks and leaking that information back to the US government. Mm -hmm. So you will notice that the entire mainstream media have been kicking the shit out of Assange and WikiLeaks for years now and hate WikiLeaks guts hate them um okay, I guys i kind of i have to use the bathroom and stuff but i do want to show something really quick uh something else that just gave me a lot of hope um this is uh dana ashley uh she does a lot of videos on alternative news corruption in the government um i think she's a christian and she she goes through some end time prophecies and things like that um this the the link is up at the top interrogation tapes now show Nick was a victim of directed energy weapon, uh, the, the shooter in Florida, uh, because he was hearing voices, um, you know, that told him how to carry out the shooting. She, she goes into false flag shootings, and then she goes into directed energy weapon experimentation and things like that. Um, the, the thing that's really awesome about this is that if you look down here, 600,000 views, 600,000 views about something that people are very interested in. And she's bringing in the topic of directed energy weapon torture and voice to skull being used on a lot of people. And she goes into the Meyer May incident um, and the Aaron, Alexa, Aaron Alexis incident and a, a bunch of other people who heard voices. Um, I, 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 I'm hesitant on a lot of that. I know that some target individuals 
uh, have gone and done violent things, um, like 0.0001%, of target individuals have taken some kind of violent action, have, have either, you know, just couldn't take it anymore or uh, listened to the voice to skull or whatever and actually did violent action. Now, the rest of target individuals that I know and that are, are doing things, they either don't know that they're being targeted they either know they're being targeted and they're kind of just being quiet and trying to live their lives or the the majority the the ones that i know are doing peaceful activism um and i would like to say you know if myron mays he had he had a lot of um i have to use the bathroom so i can't think i can think even less now um he had a lot of uh of, of um knowledge about the law so if he would not have done that violent act and he would have worked with PACs and he would have worked with the TI community and he was here now doing activism and working, maybe working with targeted justice and everything like that, he would have done a whole lot more for the cause. Uh, so violent action, even though, you know, people do see these in the news and it does kind of talk about gang stalking and stuff like that, um, it's... It's uh, not as good as you could do if you're if you peacefully do activism. Um, you know, me putting these videos out, and Dr. Horton and Ella and Ramola D and you know Karen Stewart getting the word out, and I'm you know forgetting tons of other people. You know, TI TV, Brian too, all you know getting awareness out. That's worth a lot more than one violent action uh, that's just going to vilify us more. I just do want to say that. There's a short video on, um, you know what I might do? I might play some of this and then and run to the bathroom real quick. So bear with me, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play some of this just to give you a, a little taste of this documentary that Dana actually did. And go check this out. 600,000 views where she's talking about direct, directed energy weapon torture and voice to skull. And so I'll be right back. let's go into... What happened at the beginning, there were several investigators part, right to after apprehending him that came out and said that Nick told them that he heard voices in his head telling him exactly how to carry this out. Sources tell ABC News the 19-year-old gunman told investigators he heard voices in his head directing him to conduct the attack. The timing of the shooting was very interesting in that I had just released a different video that had an ex-military scientist talking about this very same voice-to-skull technology. So the military can now put voices into people's heads. You can make people do things, and that's very easy. I could do it. I could do it to you in less than three days. So I, such as assassins? I could turn you into an assassin in less than three days. So this led me to dig deeper. I first wanted to confirm, without a doubt, was this voice to skull technology real? And if so, how did it work? I soon learned that if the average American took the time to look at documents via the Freedom of Information Act in the Library of Congress and Patent Office, they would be horrified at what is openly and admittedly being tested, tried, and written about in their very own country and on their very own fellow Americans. Dr. Joseph Sharp and Alan Fry experimented with microwaves seeking to transmit spoken words directly into the audio cortex. Dr. Fry, a biophysicist at GE's Advanced Electronics Center, Cornell University, and a contractor for the Office of Naval Research, discovered in 1958 that the like auditory minute, system responds to electromagnetic to energy and appeared um, to originate from within yeah, or near little, the back of the head. Of Fry's work in this field know, gave rise to the so-called Fry effect, which is now more commonly to referred to I've listened to this guy. I don't remember his name. Really, but really, I just wanted to... This is an example of uh, alternative news and people putting out a lot of great stuff about stuff the mainstream media is not reporting, like on YouTube and social media, um, and they're not directly targeted, um, but they're starting to, to get really interested in this topic, so that bodes very well for us. Um, and, you know, a good idea is that if you are kind of watching one of these channels where they're not directly targeted, but they're talking about corruption, they're talking about maybe, you know, how the mainstream media doesn't tell us the whole truth and things like that, to just write in the comments, you know, I'm a targeted individual,
and I've been going through directed energy weapon torture, you know, for however many years. Um, you know, please look into uh, targeted individuals, organized gang stalking, neuro weapons, directed energy weapons. Uh, you know, I've been going through, and whenever I'm like on a kind of an alternative site that's talking about things that are, uh, you know, about the military industrial complex's wrongdoings, the deep state, or anything like that you know, putting a little comment in there so that, you know, they can go look it up, then they can make a video where they already have a bunch of followers who are, you know, watching their content, and they can stick a couple of videos in there about targeted individuals, really study, and if they do study, they find out that it's true, and then it can get, you know, a couple of hundred thousand views. Um, I think a lot of targeted individuals, you, you know, have, have tens of thousands of views, so we're, our own videos are, getting really high up in the in the view category but you know we can always kind of uh, not pass the baton completely but you know kind of pass the information on and get help from from a lot of other groups um so so you know i'm, get, I'm getting kind of long here it's uh i think we're about two hours yeah we're at about two hours um i think that i'm going to kind of wrap it up I guess we'll, we'll let's close it out with this local news story um, about the Meyer and May shooting. Um, this is local local media that covered this. Um, not sure when they covered it. Published on March fifteenth, two thousand. Okay, so this was in two thousand fourteen, um, and they actually do. Uh, they, they they're talking about the incident, the Meyer and May shooting. Uh, but they actually do go into gang stalking and some of that stuff. So I guess we'll, we'll end it out with this. I just, I had, I had too much stuff that I wanted to show you all today. I may kind of cut it down a little bit more, like, so I can do hour videos and really concentrate. But I, there's just, there's so much stuff out there. There's so much stuff that we need to be, uh, you know, passing along to each other, promoting and everything like that. So I just want to say, like, you know, we see the whites of their eyes now. Fire, fire. When Stonewall Jackson say that, um, but I really want to say, and metaphorically, fire with information, awareness, with you know, um, with activism, like on TI Day, um, with you know, videos, you know, whatever you can do, whatever your talent is, now is the time. Now is the time, and you, you don't have to feel crazy about talking about the stuff that's happening to you, because people who aren't even targeted are talking about it. Uh, mainstream media, you know, the New York Times is talking about people being hit with microwaves. So it's time to, you know, if you if you were kind of worried and you're like, well, I don't want to, you know, appear crazy or whatever, now's really the time. I would really suggest it. And I know a lot of people are speaking out out there and making a bunch of videos, doing a bunch of interviews and stuff. So, you know, I'm not talking to you, but I know there are a, a lot of target individuals who may not want to, they're like, well, I don't want, I feel kind of crazy. No one believes this. They're starting to, and I think a lot more do believe us than we, uh, than we perceive. So I do want to kind of play this. Um, well, I don't really want to close out the video on this. Um, yeah, I don't want to close the video out on that. I'm just going to close the video out. Uh, but that's it's on the OSI Informer site. You can go see this local news story. I don't really want to close this video out on this because there's a lot of positive information about that, uh, you know, about the uh, the New York Times article and Susie Dawson, a lot of very inspiring things. But I may show that on a later video. I'm going to get some stuff together and then try and make make these videos a little bit more compact. But uh, but I'm kind of just trying different things and grabbing a lot of information and connecting the dots of what is happening, what's what's and it's flowing out. That dam is breaking. I mean, the dam like has these huge holes or water is coming out and the, the whole wall is about to fall and flood and the mainstream media is going to try and jump in and, you know, report some things because they know people know about it, but kind of spin it this way and that way. But eventually, you know, people will know, people will know. So I have a lot of hope. Um, this year has been really hard, been very demoralizing in my, my personal, I mean, during this whole video. My attackers were shooting me in the eyes. Uh, yeah, feel the, the heat right here, which they've never really done when I was making a video before. So I must be doing something right. You know, when you're getting the most flack, you're right over the target. Um, they're the targets now.
we're going to turn it around and they're going to be the targets. They're going to be running. Not from any kind of violence, but, uh, you know, from the truth and the public being outraged that this is happening. Um, so, all right, guys, I uh, wasn't feeling too good today, but I hope some of that information helped. Uh, please go to the links of the videos that I, that I showed uh, in my video. Um, that was a great, like everything in that Susie Dawson interview is pretty much important. And she goes through a lot of stuff at the beginning about the NSA and how the NSA basically has customers all over the world that uh, the customers ask for certain information and then it gets that information. Uh, so it has other countries as its customers uh, when, when, uh, when they're doing signals intelligent and, and just uh, regular intelligence, like cyber intelligence. Um, so it's a lot of very important information at the beginning of the video too. Uh, it's a three hour video, so you might want to break it into two parts when you watch it or, you know, if you have a lot of time like me because you're just being tortured all day, you know, you can watch the whole thing. Um, I love you guys. I hope y'all are surviving out there and I hope that you're thriving and finding things to be comfortable. Um, you know, I do kind of want to go back through some of the defenses I'm using, but I'm, I'm kind of having a tough time. Dave Case's CD is priority, I would say, um, because they are doing a lot of remote neural manipulation, a radio receiver signal to our brain in basic terms, and then they, they keep building on that. They keep building and strengthening that radio receiver signal and the remote neural manipulation protocols that they're doing to our brain. Um, so that's, it's very, very important that you get pleasing music or something to, to try and cut that off, to try and dull it, to interfere with what they're doing. Um, but I love you guys. A lot more to come. I'm going to, you know, I try to make these when I, when I feel better, um, feel a little bit more energetic, but it just wasn't happening in the last couple of days. I've been really screwed up, uh, you know, because I, I learned about the death of my, uh, my childhood friend and. Um, just getting hit really hard during all that and um, yeah so I just wanted I wanted to put a video out there uh, and this was some important information that was really inspiring to me uh, you know back when I watched it uh, and that new article is a huge deal and I hope that we see uh, you know some other like the Washington Post and I hope that we see you know uh, some of the mainstream new television news networks picking up on this story and saying microwaves on prime time, saying microwaves at the, at the embassy. I hope they talk to these people who got hit like on 60 minutes or something. That was, I said that a while back and it, it actually might happen. Um, but all right guys, I love y'all and, and way more to come. Uh, I'm going to just keep putting more important documents out. But like I said, there's so much information out there. There's so much stuff happening that we all need to jump in. We all need to jump in. And if you have a, you know, webcam and a computer, um, you know, and, and you found some articles that you like that, that are really inspiring or you think are important, you know, go ahead and put them out. If you see an interview on YouTube that you really like, you know, just mirror the content. I'm sure the people who did, like Ramola probably does not care at all that I'm doing this. She's, she loves that I'm doing this because people who are trying to get information out like this, they want us to just promote, promote, promote. So, um, so, all right, guys, um, I'll see you on the next one. I hope y'all are, uh, y'all are feeling better than me. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to kind of relax and try and maybe take a cleansing bath with Epsom salt. Um, yeah, with Epsom salt and then do a borax bath later with the palm olive. Uh, so, um, all right, guys, I will see you on the next one. I love y'all.